He would just bust out in tears and make a lot in the middle of the streets. <laughs> and that showed his faith in the law. And when I saw all that, I said, well, wait a minute, let me look at this again. I had to go and ask myself, what is a Muslim again? Because I'm so busy focusing on Islam, he was able to get away with all this behavior that if I never believed in Islam, I'd be like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? <laughs> But since I didn't understand what Islam and he was more Islamic than I was, he was able to get away with all that. Because I, I guess this is real Islam. He was devoted. He was devoted. So it came a point where I saw, I was like, this is really, this is really extreme. But your ability to see truth never breeds extremes. Do you see the point I'm making? Because truth is the ability, when you, when you see truth, you can analyze and think. So it's no room for extremes to happen. Like somebody said that, you know, I want to be so healthy, I'm going to be a breathitarian in the city with air, with car pollution from the from the vehicles coming out. You know what I'm saying? Walking down alleys with nothing but garbage fumes coming out, talking about they're going to be a, breath, uh, a breathitarian. But if you really are sold into the health conscious reality, do you see the one like it? They will get away with that. Who will to be as healthy as you can be? Yeah, right. Being a breathitarian while you're breathing fumes from a gas fumes from a car. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make any sense. Because belief, those type of beliefs breed extremes, period. Like some people say, well, I don't watch no TV. You give them a DVD, they can say they like, and they say they don't watch no TV. Extremes. I don't turn the TV off, I don't even have a TV in my house. I say, well, you're missing out on this case. You feel me? Extremes, once again. That means you can't even get something knowledgeable from TV. Extremes. Oh, it's good. It's like we in this building, and something happened where we all get locked up in this building. We run out of food here, we find an apartment, and the door has just been open. For some reason, the person that's scared left their door open, and there's nothing but meat in there. Who gonna eat? Who not gonna eat? Talking about they're vegetarian. You follow up on a man? I will fix me a turkey sandwich. <laughs> Y'all follow what I'm saying? Don't be extreme. Do not be extreme. I will be the first to make me a turkey sandwich. Y'all gonna be like, he's such a hypocrite. And I'm gonna be chewing away while you start my job. Talking about how I much of a hypocrite I am. And then when we get out, I'll return to being a vegetarian. You feel about me? <laughs> My point is, all of these different religion and spiritual views breeds extremes. People are looking to become extreme, and there's no balance. That's not being foolish. Do you see what I'm making? That's, and that's why I said truth is the ability to deal with reality as it's happening. Because if you deal with reality as it's happening, you can make a wise decision. A lot of stuff they told us was just so false. It was just, I mean, it's just so false, but it, we've become so superstitious. What well, we just accept it. We literally accept. I was arguing with somebody, the other day with somebody the other night. He was talking, about, you know, Michael Jackson. Like I know Michael Jackson slept with them children, did that. You know, I can't believe he did that. And somebody interrupted the conversation. Was like, was you really there when Michael Jackson did that? <laughs> really? <laughs> like that. So then they said, well, but even he said he slept in the bed with the children. Why would you sleep in the bed with the children like that? I said, now look, if you was the uncle, would you sleep in the bed? Would you let your children sleep in the bed with you? It had to be a good reason. I said, are you crazy? <laughs> the child could have had a nightmare. Right. Anything. No, he, that man should have been sleeping in the bed with them children. What are you talking about? <laughs> you understand what I'm making? That's how the water they mind that they're going to go as far is accusing this man of child molestation and resting that on the fact that Michael Jackson slept in the bed with, with, with the child. Who don't let their cousins and nephews run up and get in their bed? My, I slept with my parents till I was about 13 or 14 years, maybe 15. <laughs> now tell me why. Oh, like the whole world knows right. now. But I never was molested. But they just let me out. They had, they had the biggest bed in the house. You feel me? And they had the biggest TV in the house. So we all had family time laying up in my parents' bed. Come on. So my point is back to extreme again. 
We get into the extreme, extreme rights and extreme wrongs. We are able to see reality now. Religion produces that. Just when they say, just, just, when you see cases where people literally was not armed. I mean, you literally show me the damage to, the, to who you're convicting. If there's no damage equivalent to the conviction, then you're, somebody is making up some, somebody is with it on extreme. The cases they said with Dr. York, they said he molested all his children. No evidence of no molestation of no children. This man is convicted. Now, he get 133 years. Now, you tell me, even if this man molested those children, it, how did he get 133 years? Where is the crime? The damage must match. Now, okay, you're molesting the minds of our children daily by teaching them Columbus, discovering America. The body can heal. Once you mess somebody's mind, they're done. You feel like what I'm making? The mind's gone. And none of them are receiving no time for that. You got some of Catholic priests do the same thing. They get off and go. Four or five years. So my point is, is that the superstition, just of him being accused of something like that, they justify, oh yeah, give him 140 years. Extremes again. Do you see the point I'm making? So all you got to do is make a really negative statement about somebody. And people are so religious extreme, they don't even got to do it. You're going to just, what you associate with the reality of possibly doing that, you all might go to the extreme because then they get off. That's the point that I'm making again. But that's the religious concept that breeds extremes. If anybody should receive any sentences or executions, his skin is not the color of ours. I don't care what you say. You feel what I mean? Even that many people, they say, Tukey Williams killed. Just because you're going out killing people with badges, you know, and a bulletproof vest on, doesn't mean that. Why do you, why do you, that you get off? You're killing an entire race of people and locking 70% of them up, up in jail under the auspices of the justice. And even if he was, he did start the Bloods or the Crips or whatever gang that was. You started these corporate gangs. Where is your sentence and your execution? Where is your judgment? So his system of justice is not just whether it is validified by a religion or not. There is no justice in his system. There is no justice even in the way he sees reality. There is no justice in that. Literally. Because they are not trying to be just when it comes to us. They are trying to act out of those matters. To be extreme. And they want to bring extremism among one another. Do you see what I'm making? It's a Muslim out there that if you ate a piece of pork among them, they have to cut your head off. Immediately. They look just like you. If you eat some pork around me, I'll just go away. But not them. The fact that you would even pull out some pork around me, brother. Come on. Now you're becoming inhumane over a religious concept. Now, if someone imposes a poor reading reality on you, that's different. Well, they're going to just find you every time they feel like you support me. That's a different situation. <laughs> but to become aggressively violent towards people from a religious context is not justified. No matter what the religious basis of the reality is. Do you see what I mean? Now you'll become justified and violent. The people could be ignorant. They don't know nothing about this one at all. But you feel justified saying, I will kill you if you ever <laughs> grab the hand with the pork chop sandwich in it. <laughs> Try to eat some pork around me. <laughs> extremism. All of these religious and spiritual views breeds extremism. So we must be careful. You talking about somebody who's been on the path for 10 years, I've seen all of it. And I would not allow you all to walk into that in none of those organizations that I can do in your body. I've seen all of them. I've seen where they've been into some mute and mutate into nonsense. You see what I mean? All of them. I've seen where it looks like it's straight and you see how crooked that had just been somewhere up in, in, in the doctrine. And people start to justify insanity. Do you see the one I can't justify these insanities? We have to. That's why anything that we do must be centered in the love of our people. Because if it's centered in that, 
then now you can balance every other thing out. Do you see the mechanism? That's why the religion must be love, must be truth, it must be peace, it must be freedom, it must be justice. It must be truly that, not by concept, but love first. That's why love is the first one. Because from love, you can find truth, justice, peace, freedom, and the rest of them. One centered in love. For example, I ran into some Moors that uh, when I was a part of one of the uh, Moors temples, they said that you, that somebody called them black, and they beat them down. You understand me? I told that nigga to stop calling me black. I told him I was a Moor. And I've seen Muslims fight because they said, you keep calling me by my slave name. You understand me? This is not governed by love. This is extreme extremism again. Love would say, look, we ain't got to find a little concept. We don't have to destroy humanity or the conceptual reality. That's no different from the European. He wouldn't destroy humanity to impose his conceptual framework. What did he do in Africa? He killed Native Americans and Indians so he could superimpose his concept of reality on people. That's why he did it. So that they all could become Christians and Catholics and fit into his concept. That's his, that's his behavior. That's not the behavior of the original people. We had millions of tribes. And we respected the culture of those different tribes. And we were able to live in harmony in, on the motherland with the different tribal cultures. Not the European. It all got to fit in the one neat little extreme box. Call him the man. And that I will destroy you and all of you who will not assimilate and comply to the way I see reality. Do you see the problem? In my reality, you got to wear these shoes 24 hours a day. And if you don't do that, you're a heathen. Do you understand what I'm making? In my reality, you got to have a suit and bow tie, and you got to keep your hair cut, and you got to wear a low cut, or I'm not going to give you a job. Even though I use my military to control all the resources, so if you need some resources, you got to come to me anyway. So I know I want it. I already got your checkmate. So if you want to get some resources after my military controls it, you're going to have to comply with me, or you ain't going to eat. Come on. And then give you the Bible to back it up without shall not steal. <laughs> you feel me? So they hit you from every angle. From the spiritual angle, controlling the resources angle, and coming to them to get the resources. So my point is, we are not trying to imitate that in how we unfold. We're not, going, we're not trying to rise up and be kind of religious gangbangers. We don't refuse to be on. We're not going to do that. But we will put the information out to wake people up. And we will be willing to organize the awakened people. I had to touch on that today. We will organize the awakened people. And we will defend our ability to distribute information and awaken people. We will defend them with our lives. No, I will. But we are not going to gangbang our concepts and ideas on other people under the eyes of nothing. We ain't gonna gang bang. Mama, daddy, cousin, nephew, niece. We respect the free will of all human beings. Period. But we also respect our free will to give them information and to share what we know to be right with them. And that's all we desire to do. Nobody's gonna stop us from sharing that which is right. We'll defend it. We will meet aggression with aggression. We will meet force with greater force. But we allow people to be free in the choices and decisions that they make after even they have been given good information. We're not going to come and just say, what you're doing is wrong, even though it is wrong. Do you see the point? We're not going to come and tell them, because you're doing this and it's wrong, you're going to stop or we're going to kill you. We're not, that's not the game that we're playing. Because it's not wrong for anybody to be who they are or arrive at any point that they have arrived to in the universe. Do you see what I'm making? Because they do have the freedom and right to evolve based upon themselves. Do you understand what I'm making? That's called respecting other human beings. And that's what I like about uh, having study with the rosters that I do. I do uh, consider that to be valuable. That the Rastafarian culture is built on respect. You respect all human beings, wherever they are at. You say respect to all human beings. 
That's the first greeting. That's the only greeting word is respect. Do you feel what I'm saying? No matter who they are, crackhead, priest, whoever, respect is the, is, is the basic fundamental principles. We greet them all with respect. The same thing the Haitians do. You know what I'm saying? They say, well, name, which means respect. That's the greeting. So we respect all human beings in the sovereignty of being human. No matter what pitfalls that reality leads them to. No matter what areas or journeys or valleys they have to go through, we still give them the decency of respecting them as being humans. So we have no desire to impose our way upon the way of others. And vice versa, we have no desire for other people to impose their way upon us. That way we all can live in harmony. That's our point. So this DVD movement has not, is not a religious gang banging. We're going to force our beliefs and ideas and shove them down the throats and faces of other people. That's not our goal. Our goal is just to give the information to them to let them make a conscious decision based upon being given more information. Every institution does that. If they want you to join a college or whatever, or body product, what do they do? They give you some information. So they're already getting information all the time from everywhere. So we're just adding some other information into that great melting pot. So most people can't say, oh, I'm not receiving information, or it's intimidating, or, or intrusive to give somebody some information, because you, you can't walk down the street in Chicago without getting able to fly or some type of information about something going on. So that's our goal, just to put the information out. And when people say, man, I was really impacted by that information, then we organize them. We say, well, come on, we got more information for you. Matter of fact, you can be a part of this information awakening. You can be a part of this information movement of us giving out more information and us living according to this information. You can be a part of that and allow them to come online with that reality. It's the bottom line. It's really simple. And then, as us organizing, we want to bring together our resources in the way where we can provide more information for more people and provide more resources for ourselves and more people simultaneously. Because we're saying, look, well, now we went from paying a dollar per apple to buying a box of apples for five dollars because we bought and bought. Yeah. So now, with the money we spent being consumers, we can feed masses of people through proper distributing our resources. The money we spent on buying one DVD, we can give out 100 DVDs to 100 different people with our resources, you see the one they can direct it properly. The money we spent on insurance bills and doctor bills, we can buy arms that will heal an entire civilization of people. I didn't say community, that would heal an entire civilization, civilization of people. So we want to make the resources that ensure a certain quality of life available for everybody in bulk. That's our bottom line. So whatever we have, we have in bulk. But we can ensure that we're not just talking about it. We got the resources right there. We say, hey, you're going to change your diet? Well, what does that mean? How are you going to change your diet? Eventually, we're going to have all the resources right there. So when somebody makes a decision, we already got the resources. So not only can we give them information, we also can provide the necessary tools to make it easier for people to make those transitions and physical resources. And we're going to have to make the national and international connections to get large amounts of resources so that we will not be under the capitalist system in order to survive. Because that's why people have to get a job. Because they have to buy food and vegetables and pay for their living. But no, as a, as a collective of conscious people, what can we do? We, we make clothes. We buy a boat of fabric. Instead of trying to buy this one outfit, this one outfit from this capitalistic Nigerian or Ghanaian who could care less about anything Pan-African, Go try this $300 for an outfit. You can get a boat of fabric for $300 and sew it yourself. And you can clothe yourself and 5,000 other people. Did you see the point I'm making? So instead of us being these little individualistic consumers, we can come together and be a bulk buyer. So now our little becomes a lot. Do you see the point I'm making? And that's where we're going. Instead of us being together and each of us paying a dollar for an apple, we put all our dollars together and we buy a boat filled with apples. That's the ultimate goal because we know we need these resources. And if we don't find a better way to do it, we have no choice but to work for the Europeans. We have no choice but to get a job. If we don't heal ourselves, we have no choice but to get a job, get health insurance, 
or depend on the emergency room. You feel my bacon? If we can't heal ourselves and buy herbs, we have no choice. So the, the, the real choice becomes ours, becomes yours. If you're going to constantly keep dealing with the Europeans and their health system, because you believe that is a way, or you're going to say, no, we can heal ourselves, and we start just creating our own naturopathic health centers. You see what I'm making? If you say, hey, we can create a self-sufficient community that provides the resources it needs for itself, well, we're going to fill out, we're gonna have to start having job applications and teaching job skills. You see what I'm making? And then people go out and get them a job. <laughs> there is no middle ground. Either you're going to do nation building and, and revolution properly, or you're going to be under the European. We don't decide that for you. You decide that for you by what you do. If you don't do nation building right, your only choice is to be under the European. It's the bottom line. It's nothing spiritual or religious or mystical about that. If we fail in nation building, we've got to get us a job, get us some health insurance, some life insurance, retirement plan. You feel we're making? We'll have a choice. But when you're doing nation building, your only retirement plan is not to retire. Do you see what I'm making? Because as soon as people retire, that's when they start going downhill. Health and everything. That's when you really hung it up. <laughs> so the best retirement plan is not to have one at all. It's not to be looking for a retirement. It's always be looking for advancing your energy and becoming a better person than you were. That's the only retirement plan. So the whole point that I'm making is either we're going to do nation building the right, or then we need to go get under this European. Either we're going to educate ourselves, but we need to go and get in this European school and get us some degrees. There's no middle ground to it. If you don't do one, you're going to have to do another. If you don't heal yourself, you're going to be in the emergency room. Bottom line. If you don't know the herbs to take, you're going to be getting some pharmaceutical prescriptions. If you don't know how to love your people, you can look forward to more fighting, fussing, resistance, and negative energy with them. Either one way or another. The choice is not ours, it's, it's the individual. But since we have chose to do it, we just represent the option for it to be made. We say, man, well, why are we why have we started giving out all these DVDs? What's the point of them? Because we made that decision. Hey, if some we, we can educate our own people. We're not just gonna tell you that it's all this knowledge out here that you need to get, we'll give you a stack of it this day. Mm -hmm. That's the problem with our people. They're constantly just talking. Do you see the point I'm making? And not giving anything. Saying what we need to do, but themselves not willing to do nothing. Say, well, you need to study more and get more information. You ain't gave me no books. <laughs> the books are very expensive at the bookstore. You tell me I want to study and become good at, at, and know myself from a historical perspective, but those books are very expensive. In a library, you can't keep a book out long enough to really read it. And by the time you take the book back, you haven't finished reading it, you're probably going to keep it a little over and blow your library card off. Because you're still trying to read the goddamn books. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So unless somebody is providing books, they're just talking. Saying, well, you need to eat healthier, but they can't get, you can't count on them people for one little thing. They're going to say, you know what, we need some money. It's $15 a plate. But you just told me I needed to eat healthier, and now you're going to charge me to become healthier. Why did you tell me that in the first place? <laughs> I could have been eating bad for at a low cost. Not eating healthy is fifteen dollars a plate. Hmm. So my point is, is that we want to be different from that. If we tell somebody they can do something, we want to provide resources for it. If we don't, if we can't provide the resources to assist them in doing that, we want to keep our mouth shut. Just do what we can do until we can provide those resources. Saying, well, okay, well, we can provide. Shelter. We say, well, you tell people you're going to have to quit your jobs and forget this European, well, then where do people live at? That's where the contradiction in the nation of Islam lies at. How is the white man the devil? I got to see I gotta see the devil every day to survive. Why are you <laughs> telling me it's the devil? It's not working for me. It will work for, for me to see him as my God, to see he's giving me everything. He's even giving me what I can give you. The money I put in a little... Thing that's passed around, I got that from the devil. So why is he the devil? The reason you wearing that nice suit is because of the money that he gave me that I put inside of your. 
So how is the white man a devil? Do that make any sense? <laughs> Matter of fact, who made this suit that I'm wearing is a European designer. Where I brought it from. Calvin Klein, whoever it is. I'm wearing the clothes of the devil. How is he the devil? It'd be better off for you to stop teaching me that. It'd be better if you just came out and said, that's your God. Then we would be more successful within the system and we can bring you more money. Right? So really, you're working against yourself. If you try to use God, we say, okay, we go, we got something, we'll something else from God for you. And then we can cooperate on our jobs and not be no black militants while we're at work and get fired. Do you know what I'm making? So you're working against yourself. We on job talking, we on we at work talking about we against capitalism. We against the white devil on our jobs. <laughs> Come on. That has to change. So my point of making is that everything that we say, we are going, we're able to provide resources. We're able to provide housing. It's up to you all to take advantage of. If you all want to pay rent, you're going to have to pay rent if we can't figure an alternative housing situation. If you're not willing to embrace an alternative housing situation. And if you love the European, just be proud of it. Be proud of it. Because the people who say that they, they're against the European and they want to see us have our own society, but really don't, are blocking us from seeing the people they really do. If you love the European with your heart and soul, there's no problem. We, we ain't going to be mad at you. But if you really want to see us with our own society and community, that's functional. That's not, that's not something mystical. You don't need to do 55 salats and read 85 books and read all the holy books to do that. Do you understand what I'm making? It's, it's, it's actual actions that can be acted out to make that exist. Do you see the one making? And do you embrace the actions that would have that exist? If that's what you want. If you're against the actions that would have that exist, then obviously you don't want the result. Well, we say, okay, well, we want a daycare center for the children. What does that look like? Somewhere where our children can be. Well, he made up the concept of daycare. He, that's a capitalistic concept. It's nowhere that we all are around children and not being cared for. So it's, in, in reality, there's no such thing as a daycare. Because you can't just care for a day. You feel what I mean? If you truly care, you care for life. So... Let's all to, to in order for day we go beyond daycare when we just simply start caring about our children, but we don't go leave them with strangers every day. That's no daycare. I would never leave my children with no damn strangers for no day. I'm talking about that's daycare. Come on, you never met this person before in your life, and some of us didn't even question the facilities to see if they had qualified people. We just leave our children with them, and that's a daycare. That's called leaving your children with strangers. That's all it is. And then you're taking a leap of faith and trust, too. Because you trust that this institution is going to take care of your child, right? But you can't trust nothing else, though. You feel me? Y'all hear what I'm saying? You can trust that you can leave your beautiful, divine children with a stranger. And feel good while you're at work doing whatever you're doing. And trust that your children are in good hands. Come on, that's nonsense. And that's a daycare. So my point is that why does trust work with leaving our children with strangers and it doesn't trust in our capacity to create our own reality? You feel what I'm making? We trust that we can take our wives and lay them up on the table so some European can stick his hand up there. You feel what I'm making? We trust that. I guess you know what you're doing, Billy. I, you <laughs> dropped all my ancestors in the Atlantic Ocean. I'm sure you know exactly what you're doing. I trust you. Matter of fact, I'm going to go out here and sit in the room while you do it. You hear the point that I'm making? Well, we can't trust ourselves to deliver our own children. Or people who look like us that say they can deliver children. Oh, that's hard to do. So we need emergency room. Because being around each other is always an emergency because we can't deal with ourselves. You feel what I'm making? Give you an example. Somebody get a pain in their in side. It's an emergency. When does pain become an emergency? Why are you in the emergency room for pain? Getting cocaine. 
in the form of Tylenol's mixed codeine. Mm -hmm. When is pain becoming a very strong? You follow what I'm making? I'm just telling you how they, because us being with it as ourselves is an emergency. Why? Because we're not prepared to be with ourselves. So the least little thing really is an emergency. For example, somebody get in a simple argument and call the police. Because we can't communicate with one another. It's an emergency whenever we start talking to each other. You feel me? Just, just look, at the, look at the illusion. But that's what keeps them in power in our society. Us being able to not deal with ourselves in every level. We can't teach our own children. We cannot communicate among ourselves. And we can't heal ourselves. So we need schools, police, and we need Europeans for our hospitals and medical systems. Mm -hmm. And we don't know God, so we need his doctrines. So in two, we start cutting him off in each and one of those angles. And we feel secure enough to deal with all those situations ourselves, then we'll be free. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Okay, you say that, well, it'd be better off that, hey, take, take the, uh, the, the pregnant woman to the hospital because they're more proficient to deliver children. But when I hear a story about a, a lady, not even, a sister not even being pregnant, her stomach was just filled up with blood. Mm -hmm. And where they thought she was pregnant, something went off and it was just like bleeding and she was internally bleeding. And when they thought she was growing because of the pregnancy, do you see what I'm making? Oh, I, I, it wasn't a pregnancy at all. So she almost died. Not only did she lose the baby, she almost died. In another case, where a woman's uterus was wall was very thin, they ended up having a miscarriage, of which they could themselves could have caught. You know, if they was doing a proper examination. So she ended up losing the baby. And literally some red raspberry tea would have helped, you know, strengthen her uterus. But we feel that they're more efficient because they got these uniforms on and because they look all professional and all that. We believe that this is a proficient reality. We believe that these Europeans are dependable. Or these little institutions that we send our children to, we believe they're dependable because they're outside of us. And we know niggas ain't shit. <laughs> so if it's outside of us, it must be good. Because we're what bad is. We're the manifestation of bad. So you know how you get something good? Just get it far outside of our ability to do control it as possible. This is what they've been taught us to think. So, situations, the solution seems outside there in their reality. So we keep buying in over and over and over again with everything we're doing. When I say buying in, I mean it That's what consumerism is. Constantly buying in to there's something good outside of ourselves. So my point is, when we get tired of being afraid of ourselves, because we're isolated, that's why all these people live in this building with their door closed. And it's two people here, two people there, and you walk down the State Street right here, it's about 50,000 homeless people right there. <laughs> because we don't want to deal with ourselves. We literally are afraid of ourselves. So we must isolate ourselves into these little small being entities and lock our doors from one another. And then wait till something bad happen and then talk about unity. But we just unify for every other day outside of the week. Because if we really were unified, all those bad things wouldn't even be able to happen. You wouldn't have to protest if we were already unified. If we unify, a European can come up in here talking to them, we could chop them up and bag them up and split his body out through all the apartments. <laughs> and they'd be like, well, what happened to Billy? No one knows. <laughs> Do you understand the problem? Because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be no room for that to happen if we were unified. But unifying is a concept for us that people make money off of. It's not a day-to-day expression. It's a money maker for so-called civil rights pimps. You know, we need to be unified. We need unity. No, we don't. Unity is a day-to-day -day thing. It's not something that you can just achieve when some emergency situation happens. Unity is a way of life. That means we have unified relationship, unified dependable relationships among one another. Because that's all they got. It's unified relationships. When they get on that radio and 10 other cars show up, that's unity. You feel what I'm making? And when they can make that happen any time of the day, that's unity. They don't just make it happen when this incident might happen. We'll have to plan a week in, two weeks in advance and say, oh, we're going to get together on the first. They can get on their radio and get 50 of them together within 15 minutes. That's unity.
until we can match them with that type of unification power, then we really are no match against who our enemies really are. Mm -hmm. So unity goes beyond that concept of us getting together around something negative happen, happening. We should have already been together. So it's hard for something negative to happen. Because they said a strong is only a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So if we have no weak links because we are truly unified, then it would be no way for the chain to be broken. Because that's all them getting into is breaking chains that already exist. They just break into the chains. But uni unification cannot be impulsive. Because when you start talking about unification and stuff like that, people think like, oh, we're going to have to, man, we're going to kill some people. You're going to have to do this, and if you don't do that, I'm going to knock you in your mouth. We're not talking about that. We're talking about people that love unity, man. We're not talking about the gang-banging reality, where people don't really love unity. They're just so afraid for their lives, they'll go along with it. We're not interested in that. Because if we can cause fear in them, so can our enemies. If fear is the only relationship we can create, the enemy is even more fearful. They're more afraid of the European than they are us. So if we can make them fearful, they can make them petrified. You see the point I'm making? So come on, think about it. We can't just have people that we got at the gun. Talking about if you don't come to this meeting, we're going to cut your head off. That's not the type of environment that we're trying to create. We're teaching people the significance of learning how to love unity. So they themselves can arrive at the conclusion of how powerful and that dynamic that is to increase the quality of their lives. That's what we're doing. We don't care about trying to force nobody really to do nothing. Because that's not the right energy or the right spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why some people go take the DVDs that we give out, and they get other people get them, and they just decide they're going to sell them. We don't care whether you sell them or not. We just want to get the information out. When we say we're not capitalists, we mean that. I mean, we don't even care about what capitalists do. Whether you sell them or not, that we could care less. Because we're not concerned about capitalism, period. All we see that whether you sold it or not, we saw that you got the information out. And that's what we wanted to do. Get the information out. If you made money, who cares? Money is nothing but a piece of paper. Do you see what I'm making? We don't care how much pieces of paper you collect. <laughs> You mean I mean you go out there and pick up all the trash you want to? Mm -hmm. What do we care? Mm -hmm. So my point is we don't care whether people sell the information or not. The key is get is people giving it out. So unity is not being is not this is not a compulsive organization where we're trying to force or compulse people to do things. Or create some type of strict laws and standards to say you have to do this. If you don't love it, lead it. Bottom line. We're not forcing nobody to be here. Even in lay institutions, they're intelligent enough to say people who don't want to be part of it, just turn your badge. Do you hear what I'm making? Mm -hmm. So why we got to be so gangsterous to love principles as a group? Why we got to be so vicious with each other? Why? Because we don't believe each other or trust that other people have the same ideas we do. Mm -hmm. We've been taught not to trust one another. So we think that if somebody, somebody tells us something, um, that it's possible that they're not of our complexion or color or melanin, that it's possible they don't really mean what they're saying. So we need some extra violence or some violent attitude to back it up. Is it possible that we all could possibly agree on manifesting the divine among this community? Like, for example, I noticed that with the rosters, any roster that you deal with, they will always tell you, you're not a real roster. <laughs> they will always tell you that. No matter how much weed you smoke, no matter how long your locks are, they say you are not a roster. And they tell each other that all the time. And same thing with hip hop. Cats will tell you, you are not a real hip hop. They will tell you that. Whether you tag, write, or break, they be like, you ain't into true hip hop. You ain't real. You don't go back to this particular time. You could be no real hip hop person. I'm like, come on. Because we don't trust each other. We're always disqualifying one another. Because that's what Willie Lynch set up. He created an air of distrust among one another. So now we don't even trust each other no more. So we feel like we gotta be violent and back up and keep the niggas in check. We're now being a European among one another. That's not what we're trying to set out, which is why we put up information. We don't, we refuse to resort to those tactics. Now we will defend our community and our society like guerrillas, without no doubt or hesitation. But we're not gonna impose nothing among other people. If you don't know yourself to the degree that you love us building the divine nation, you don't need to be in one or be a part of one. No, no, need to, no gun needs to be put in your head. 
And that's how I see these other organizations operate. They're operating like you got to do this or you got to do that or it's a life and death situation. No, it's not. When you go to Harold's Chicken and eat you a piece of Harold's Chicken, is it a life and death situation? When you go to McDonald's, is a dude stand up in Canada, you either going to eat this hamburger or you're going to die. So if you can so harmoniously and willing and peacefully support corporate European demonic America, why couldn't you do the same for, for your own people? Why do your own people have to put a gun to your head unless you have not truly been waking up? Because you support Lucifer willingly. <laughs> no one's putting a gun to your head to say you got to go up at McDonald's and eat a death burger. you doing that on your own. So just because you have the capacity to do that which is bad willingly, you have the capacity to do that which is good willingly. And that's what we're depending on. Those who want to do good willingly. Because we're not going to be babysitting and gangstering people. I don't got no time for that. If you want to be gangster, go be among the European. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to gangster you and play the mob and mafia and all that. We don't got no time for that. We're trying to meditate and be peaceful among ourselves. We're trying to master ourselves. How do we have time to be gangster and bullying other people? Tell them what they need to, should, and have to, and must do. We got no time for that. If you need that, go to corporate America. That's how they function. If you do this, you get fired. Everything's an alternator. You know what I'm saying? If you don't do this, you get fired. If you're late, you get rolled up, you get fired. If you don't do this, you ain't a part of the union, you don't do this, you get fired. We don't operate like that. The only thing that will happen if you don't do that what you're supposed to do is you're going to experience it. You feel me? By your own. You will not benefit when you do things that are unbeneficial. Period. Yourself. You don't eat, get your vitamin C, and your immune system fails. You follow what I'm making? So we ain't got a gangster you to eat by take vitamin C tablets. You feel me? You don't drink water, your kidneys is filled up with toxins. We ain't got a gangster you to sit at the table and make you drink a water, eight glasses of water after day. And we're not going to do it. Because how can we really sit and drink our eight glasses if we sit and watch and see if you're going to do that? <laughs> you feel me? Straight to God about it. We don't have no time for those type of relationships. This is not a mental institution. This is for people who love nation building. Give you an example. The concept of polygamy. That concept has been false. Why has it been false? If you say you're about nation building, there can, when you have sisters that come together, that's a daycare. You have sisters that come together, that's the restaurant. You see the one like that? There can be no sisters that come together and they're not something manifest from that. That's not had nothing to do with the European. Because the European is running his whole society off of our sisters. That's who's going downtown yeah. and working in the offices. School. He's shining because of our women. Period. Now he's giving them currency notes with his face on it that has no gold and silver backing and letting them go back and spend all of it with him in Macy's and Marshall Fields and the rest of it. Sure. So they're not working for the money. Because they spin it and give it right back to him. What are they working for? Yeah. To keep him shining. Do you understand what I'm making? So my point is, is that Elijah Muhammad was true when he said the nation can rise no higher than a woman. It's true. Because his nation is because of our woman. Look at Condoleezza Rice. You know what I'm saying? Look at Oprah Winfrey. His nation is the way it is because of our woman. Our women, look, go downtown and see who's riding the buses. See how many sisters you see in small vehicles driving and during rush hour versus the men. Do you see the woman? See who's coming and working in these rush hours. Who's making his society? His woman could not even do it. The European woman could not even run his society. That's why she got on the feminist movement. Our women always have been running his society. There's always been the mammies and the secretaries and this and that. Always, always. His woman is incompetent and incapable. Because she's over-consumed by vanity of which she's not even willing to work for. Mm -hmm. Only difference is our woman is willing to work for her. His woman know that he owes her. You follow the point I'm making? Mm -hmm. That's the only difference. So my point is, is that that is what nation building is. It do lie in the hands of our sisters getting organized. It do. When you bring these sisters and these energies together, you have 15 to 20 moms. You have, everything's being taken care of. There's no such thing as an orphan. And an abandoned child. 
How can you escape nutrition environment with all those original agricultural specialists? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And lobotomists, you can't escape the reality of our natural culture. You can't. But you say, well, what is it? Why do, 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 do the women reject polygamy? Because they want their own, just like all the women. <laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Everybody wants their own. They want their own house so they can lock the door. You feel me? Their own man. Think about this. Mm -hmm. They want their own slave. You follow me? We don't possess human beings. We work together to create divine realities as human beings. Men don't possess women. Men, men don't, women don't possess men. We all work together to produce a divine reality for everyone. Now you have societies where a man can have 15 children. Do you see the point I'm making? Easily. A woman, every nine months, can have one. A woman can only have so many children without destroying her body. Do you see the point I'm making? The more children that she has, the bigger of a burden it puts on their body. So if each man limited his sperm to that one woman, that would be genocide. Do you feel the point I'm making? Mm -hmm. Because that man could have had 40 to 50 beautiful black children of which women could have, you see them making nurture and take care of, because you can breastfeed other people's children. Mm -hmm. You feel the point I'm making? So my point is, is that that's the concept of genocide. When we talk about, I'm going to have one man and have really two children, it's really the norm. The, the real most before you really start really putting real stress on the body. Do you see what I'm You get into four and five and, and those high numbers. But I don't think the population of our race should stop when we're creating soldiers and them hoteps. Do you see what I'm making? And Malcolm X, why should we, the production of our children be stopped? But that's what they're doing by saying, look, no, I'm a, you're going to be my man and I'm as a matter of fact, you're going to be my man, and I don't even want no children. <laughs> do you hear what I'm saying? Like, when did being with a man have, have nothing to do with the, 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 the expansion of the race? Resurrection. What do, what, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there is no having a man outside of having a community. Do you feel what I'm making? There's no such thing. Period. Because what you call a man... The universe could destroy instantaneously. Do you understand, Michael? But if you had that man right, you will have 15 of those men that are growing up to be that man. Do you understand, Michael? I don't know what I'm saying. Katrina could wipe away what you consider to be attached to as a man. Cars and natural disasters can remove what you thought was your man so quickly. But if you had that man right, you would have 40 of those men with those genes and that mindset, with that consciousness, with that being to look up to. We're talking about revolution now. So it never was about you having that or owning that man. Period. It was about the community, the bigger picture. Revolutionaries had already chose their that The type of stuff we're talking about, we can die any minute and embrace the opportunity to die for what we believe in. Do you feel what I'm making? We'll die instantaneously. Do not fear life in jail, imprisonment, torture, nothing for these thoughts that we're willing to project. But in the case that that happens, all we have is the offspring of that conscious reality who will want to wear those very big shoes. You feel me? of the revolutionaries that exist before them. Just as, as we look back at Malcolm X, you see the one I'm making, and Fred Hampton, and all the revolutions of our past, Shaka Zulu, and Chisun El Overture, and all those revolutions that we look back to. Because we're filling their shoes, because they were great men that showed the potential of black men. So now we're in those shoes now. Do you follow what I'm making? So they said, well, man, if you're not there with your children, you would dead be dead. But how was Fred Hampton there with his child? And he was killed by the Chicago Police Department. Was he a dead be dead? 
or did he father thousands of revolutionaries that will come after him? So you can't mix white supremacy and how they view familyhood with black nationalist revolutionary culture. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It don't mix. Was Fred Hampton Sr. a dead beat dead? No, because what is Fred Hampton Jr. doing? Trying to fulfill the shoes of the example that his father left, even though his father was not there. The best thing his father could have did was lay a good example of how great and what to be, what to live and die for. That's the best thing that his father could have done. That's even more important than being there as a coward. You follow what I'm Turning up a can of beer in front of the basketball game. So he, he, his father didn't live to be past 23 years old. But those 23 years, he did more than most men will ever be able to do. It's it, it opposed to showing the potential of what our, our black people can do. So come on. We're trying to fit our concepts of familyhood and mix it with white supremacy. See, the European can live like that because he's not at war. 70% of his children are not being locked up in jail. So they can live in these little isolated two-family households, and that's my husband. They can play that game because the society has been set up for them to do that. But we go and play that game while 70% of our children are locked up in jail, while our children are being drafted to fight in, in a war. Do you feel the point I'm making? Mm -hmm. And dying in a war that has nothing to do with us. So we don't have time to play those games. We have to get down to the business. And we have to have a culture that supports revolutions and which supports revolutionaries. The life and death of revolutionaries. We ain't gonna be here for now. But some of us would rather live standing on our feet than dying on our knees. Do you see the point of that? Thing? So we do not fear death. Fear no man. And know that dying could be independently or the consequence of choosing to stand up for our people. We know that. And embrace it. So when, when people stand up, the rest of our community must stop playing them games. You see the one maker? As a community, we gotta stop playing them games. As a whole, and know that hey, we're we're at war. We're not trying to live like our Bundy and Peggy. You know what I'm saying? Or the Simpsons or even the hospitals at that moment. We know that every day we go out and hand out that literature and go into some of the roughest neighborhoods that we are putting our lives on the line. And the further we move along with this thing, the more our lives are being placed on the line, consciously. Because we're saying we don't even care. We're not even worried about that. We, we don't even care. Some people say, you putting out that information, you messing with our money. We'll kill you. Do you think I care? Because the people I, I would have waken up as a master is more valuable than my own life. And my very death could create radicals. Of all the information that I have put out, some of the people won't even watch it till after I'm dead. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I wonder what he was really saying. It wasn't until after Dr. Martin Luther King was killed or to Malcolm X was shot, to the Panthers and the Stokely Carmichael even to rise up. Their whole organization was raised up on his death. They said by any means necessary, they got that from him. So if Malcolm X had not died the way he did, the Panthers would have never come into existence. Nor would Stokely Carmichael. Do you understand the point I'm making? So therefore, nor would your so-called Tupac Shakur exist. None of these beings would have existed if it had not been for the beings who died would not be no Hebrew Israelite community in, in uh, uh, Israel, would not be no Nuwabians. These entities would not have even existed had it not been for the death of people before them. So we don't fear death, nor are we trying to live this thing up in the most beautiful Eurocentric way. We're here to do the work. And if we die on the job, then that only shows our loyalty and our devotion to the work that we had to do. So my point is, is that with that type of being, I need 20 to 30 to 40 children. Because somebody is going to look at what their father has done, and they're going to choose to wear those shoes. So our, that's a call on our sisters 
to really ask themselves, what do you want? Do you merely want to survive in this society under white supremacy? Or do you want to divest your energy into the manifestation of a new reality? That's a call on the sisters to answer that question. Because if you want to live comfortably in this society, you shouldn't be with no damn revolution talking about nation building. <laughs> you shouldn't be. Because it's uncomfortable when you're challenging people's ideas and concepts about slavery. There's nothing comfortable about that. If you want to live off, go marry a white man. Feel me? I was up in borders the other day. I saw a European that was specifically looking for black, conscious-looking women that he could spend his, his money with. Specifically. He had no problem. He was trying to find them as natural-looking as he can. Because they appreciate our natural women sometimes more than our brother. Because they know what they are. So you should be among those Europeans and marry them. But if you get and be in the presence of revolutionary nationalistic beings, brothers, it's a call on you to step up outside of the matrix of white supremacy, of limited thought paradigms. You see the one making? Because a revolutionary is more than your man. He's the man of the community. Not just in life, even in death. You understand the one making? If we, are, our sisters, allow us to do the great work that we have to do, to support us. Hmm? It push us up to do it. Come on. Need the support. <laughs> Straight What's up. What's going to happen? Starving for it. That support Starving. is going to take us beyond the death. You have a chance of living as long as we do. We're the war. <laughs> y'all have a, I mean, statistically, y'all probably all live for us. By statistics. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. By statistics. So y'all going to be the one saying, your daddy was this, and this is your daddy, and this, that, and the other. Man. You feel me? Straight up. I don't know about y'all brothers, but I ain't pushing my man. I'm going to be right on the side of him, like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is. That's real. That's what we, this what we got to do. You know, I, I say that when my people come with me, I don't say I don't want y'all behind me. I want it to be a legion of us on the side of each other walking forward. That's real. That's really going to scare the enemy. Man. Damn. That's all I keep saying is <laughs> us just, just moving forward all together, seriously doing what we're supposed to be doing because it's just it's so much, so much cut out for us. We ain't even got time for BS no more or, or playing games. And I, I tell people all the time, if you can accomplish a relationship in this lifetime, that's a whole lot. But you, can't, you can't forget your purpose. Really? You know, our ancestors, they left behind legacies and, and they prepared the future for the children. All a lot of people thinking about is how we sit up and, and you got to pay the bills the next day and what such and such is doing. Right. But when I was having this debate with this girl last night and I had to just calm myself down because she was consistently trying to come at me. I was like, let me tell you something, sister. <laughs> I, I, I know about the ancestors. You know what I'm saying? That not one because they dwell within me, and two because there's just something waking up inside of all of us. And if you're not paying attention, you won't notice it. I told the sister. She said, "Which one of your children are a disappointment?" I said, "Neither one of them." I said, "They live their lives and they 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 learn the lessons that they learn." Really? But I'm trying to set forth an example for my children and leave something for them and the grandchildren that are coming and the children that come after that and so forth and so forth. We have to start preparing for the future. It's not about us. It's about getting them and having things in order for them because the enemy got everything in order for his children. But our children, and then the sister, she was like, well, you know, you don't know if your children are going to come out to be a crackhead. That's one time I really wanted to present the secret to the sister and say, you know what, you need to view this. I said, because I don't see none of my children ever becoming a crackhead. And if that's what like they like path is meant for, for to happen to them, then that's just a lesson that they have to receive. Right. You see what I'm saying? But it's not about how um it's not about how I should be, you know, just it's, it's not about us just focusing on one thing. It's about us learning how to focus on a lot of things and making things happen in different areas. 
You know what I'm saying? It's not. It's not just the. Uh, it's, 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 it's just a lot. And it's the reverse way too, meaning that uh, because it's really beyond polygamy. You know, it, it, every woman needs to be protected and secured by the entirety of the community. Absolutely. So it really ain't no your wife. I mean. Mm -hmm. You, we got to make sure our entire community is secure right. all the time. Do you feel the one making it? 100%. So we have to go beyond those concepts that will make us separate. And we really are depending on each other for security yeah. all the time. We're depending on each other for support all the time. So we can't have a, a two-sided door mm -hmm. where we're afraid and distrust each other, but at the same time, we're depending on each other for security and support. That's because people get caught up in their emotions. They and they gotta get away from the emotions. And realize that the purpose is greater than how you're feeling right now. You you got to get up and do what you got to do regardless. You know, if you sitting around talking about, well, I don't know, then you're not gonna know. If you don't get up and make it happen, it's not gonna. Not in your reality anyway. Your reality is what you make it. And if you should sit around and and and, and just build off of materialistic things and things that have no importance to, to, to what our future depends on, then, you know, you'd be caught up in everything else. Right. That's real. Things that are relevant. You teach it. Get to the bottom line. You see what I'm saying? A lot of times, you know, we don't realize the key to all this is simplicity. Just keeping it simple. If you, you, you make things too complicated, then people don't understand that. Like you say, you pass out the CDs, DVDs, people get the information, they get it, and they utilize it to their advantage, what, what they need from it or whatever it is, and they take it, and they build from it. You know, when you get to giving people a speech, then you make them reject you. All you do, is, what we have to realize now is our presence is just enough. Not to say we just these perfect beings, but your presence is just enough to elevate another person. You see what I'm saying? You open up your mouth, you didn't grace people with the presence or the knowledge that you've received. Like I said to I said to somebody the other day, I said, even if you don't read books, put them in your vicinity. You absorb the knowledge automatically. You see what I'm saying? People be like, you know, I was talking to this, this guy today. I was doing his hair. And uh, he told me that he was done. I asked him, I, it was another guy. I was doing one guy hair. There was another guy sitting in the room. I said, you want something to do? You want a book to look at anything? He said, I'm through with school. I said, you know what, brother? I said, you don't ever remember nothing else. I, tell, I, I tell you or anybody, anything anybody tell you, remember this. You're going to be schooled to the day you die. School is every day. He was like, well, I don't have to go to the university. I said, the university could be the streets. I said, you know, a lot of people get the, the this this conception about me talking about some have you went to college? No, I haven't went to college. That's just learn how to go with inside myself and dig up the information that I truly really need. Right. And I vibrate off of that. You know what I'm saying? And everything that I talk about it ain't necessarily correct, but I'm not out offending or trying to tell people, well if you don't believe my truth then you bogus. You know, you how could you be that complicated? You know <laughs> That much of a disagreeable being. That much of a disagreeable right. being to disagree with somebody because they disagree with something you're saying or whatever. You know, if you, if you mean you're able to build, I'm grateful. Right. If you're able to accept what I'm saying and I can accept what you're saying, <laughs> that to me is more edification than somebody passing me some dollars. You know, I get so tired of people telling me, you know, different things like, you know, you know what you're doing, you should be charging me. I feel that. It's time for us to get away from the away from the charge fee. Charge fee. That's the charge. That's the charge. Yes. <laughs> I like that. Good job. Straight charging. Can I double? <laughs> and then too, that uh, it, that's our inner argument. If we come to argue with people, we, we ourselves can be better. We just, that's a personal argument. I just well, I rather let people go ahead. Let me work on it, and even if I have to get amongst people that are sincere about it and work with them. You know, why, why keep arguing with people when there's people that I want to embrace without even, you ain't even got to explain it to them. And if you do explain it to them, you're just celebrating the fact that it's not. 
they willing to embrace the reality and build. So uh, at some point, the more serious you get about it, you then won't have a time argument time. Like, well, party is over here. You tell me. It's a raw pool, vegan, holistic, natural consciousness. Party going on. Well, I'm going to be over here arguing with you. If you going to come and join the party, well, you need to think about it and, and you know meditate on it and watch it. We'll give you another stack of DVDs. Right. Maybe, just maybe, you'll get to one of them. If somebody will steal them from your house and they call and explain to you what you had because you never looked at them. So, I mean, that's where I'm at now. I don't argue with nobody. Each individual is their reality. If you believe it, you have a right. Because now I don't have any confidence. Because that's showing you inner conflict. If you argue with people all the time, I'm like, you have to really create your reality. I'm just presenting your options. And to the degree that you embrace this option, we'll be built. To the degree that this option does not agree with the reality that you choose to create, then you have a right to create your own. I don't know who you are. And that's our goal. So I don't, I don't spend time arguing with people. Just give them the information. And some people, you know, you, you think that you all may agree. And find yourself arguing with those people. Accept it for what it is. The people, the people have a divine position on when they create. So you, same thing with everybody. So that, and that's where unity goes wrong again. We feel like we all got to be unified once again. So if you feel really that you've got to be unified with somebody no matter who it is, you're also going to feel like you got to argue with them. You see that, well, I really, I, what you eat, don't make me shit. So why am I only arguing with you about, you know, that's your... I, you know, I can't jump in front of the bullet. You feel me? I can't do it. So I can't keep arguing with you. That's your reality. You know, I'm not going to go over to Asia and, and argue in English to some Japanese right. and try to get them to understand what I'm saying. That's their language. That's their reality. So I can respect that. And, and for that case, you know, I, I, I talk to my mother very little. You know, I love her. But that's her reality. She want to eat pork and watch all my children. You know what I'm saying? That's her reality. She want to have a, a negative attitude about how she see reality. I mean, she deserves that. Who am I to go and impose on her? With all these loving divine people that come here every Sunday to hear what I got to say. <laughs> well, I'm going to be arguing with her about what she should or shouldn't do. And when, whenever at that point she agrees and grows and say, well, you know, I, that's, that's something interesting. I'll be right there within two seconds. Until then, I'm trying to fit, a, you know, a square in a wooden, a circle in a wooden pit and a square pit. It's not gonna work. So I respect her position and her growth process and let her be. And I move on. And, you know, same with all my family members. I love you, but I can love you from a distance too. I ain't got to be there. You know, every time you turn up the fifth, saying I don't think you should do that. I got something better to do with my time. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll give you the DVD on how liquor will, can lead to, you know, the destruction of your liver. You know, I'll give you that. But I'm not going to be there every time you turn up the bottle. I'm not going to follow you into the liquor store and tell you that, you know, you shouldn't buy the next bottle. That's your reality. Now, now look at it. We've been raised in the same household. I'm no more intelligent. That's egotistical to say I'm intelligent. I'm so intelligent that I made all these great decisions. No, it's not true. We both had the same decisions. We grew up in the same household, same parents. You made the decisions that you made. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you some light. You can grasp on that light, but you can keep making them other decisions. So at some point, we've got to give people the free space mm -hmm. to decide what they're going to be and just keep presenting the options to them, but let them make their own decision. Because otherwise, how are we going to keep growing? You know how much growth it takes in, in, in nation building? It is taking me so much growth. They have to just study herbs, to study this, to study that, to study that. When do I have time to keep arguing with somebody about some old information? I don't. Because nation building itself requires me to grow and move and act in a certain manner. And if I don't grow and move and act, I'm, I don't want it. You feel know I me? Mean? i got to build it so when they decide that they do want it, it'll be here. But if I spend time arguing with them when they decide, we all ain't going to have nothing. Like, yeah, I'm going to do it today. Do what? I've been arguing with you, ain't that good? And then be late. Okay, I guess I'll go back to white supremacy. So to prevent that from happening, we got to start doing the work and find the more positive people. Those people on the grid, find some more. Yeah, keep going. Keep the, keep the door open. Keep it rotating. Keep it rotating. Now, I know y'all see groups of people coming in, 
These groups agree. This person agrees. It's like a revolving door. Beautiful. Keep it revolving. If somebody keeps stepping out of it. You know, like the revolving doors they had downtown? Keep it revolving. Every now and then another conscious person will step up out that door. But that's the attitude that you have because it's not personal. It's a principle. It's a path. So if people step off, well, you know, we love you, but the train is still going. You can't stop the train. If you jump out and roll off, I mean, that's on you. But the train is going to reach the destination. So some of us stand as that train. Many can get off at whatever stop they want to. By the time we get to the end of the line, we're going to come. So that's why I don't get caught up into people because now they're going to make me doubt what I know to be true. You can argue with me. By the time I'm, now I'm doubting. Well, how do you know what you know is what you know that you know? Like, now, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know y'all have been there with me. Right. How do you know that you know? Like, no, that's all right. When you get to the point, <laughs> you'll be fine. <laughs> when you get to that point, who has time to do to deal with that? Because you know why? It's a personal decision. It's not a matter of knowledge. What do you decide? Because there's going to be some things, even on this path, that's going to get in front of you. That could try to scare you off of. And it's not trying to. It's just a harsh reality that if you choose to be a skydiver and you, you know, you bungee jumping, that you might get a bad cord one day. You know what I'm saying? That might have just broke at the right time that your body didn't break. It broke just right when you hit the ground. If it had a broke a few minutes earlier, you would have died. So whatever decision you choose, there are going to be consequences good and bad. The bad consequences is sometimes enough to scare people off the path. Do you see the one right And when they get, they start seeing the bad, then they start rethinking this thing. Well, maybe the white man is God. Because the way that went down. <laughs> you feel? And I've seen them do that too. And you go right back into the institutions and get right back. Yeah, I'm, I'm back in there tomorrow morning. I'm not messing with y'all no more. Yeah. Stuff y'all talking about, man, this is it's too deep for me. Both of my parents. Straight up, I'm going back to Prozac, <laughs> Ritalin, and whatever other drugs I can get on. Because they don't realize you're damned if you do when you're damned. Right. Right. <laughs> that, that's the point. So sometimes you got to let them see that. No matter how much you love them, you got to step away, let them see it. Like, dang, you know what? Man, that, it is on me. Because they, sometimes they don't really think. That is you pressuring them. Mm -hmm. If you really right there just trying to give them the information, maybe they start thinking that this is you pressuring this on them, not realizing that they attracted this to them. Mm -hmm. But when you step away, now they can look at what they've attracted. Well, dang, I miss my son trying to tell me to eat right because I really know I need to change my diet. I don't know why I'd be arguing with him because what I'm arguing about makes no sense. <laughs> I know that I need to change my lifestyle, and I know that we should be doing this as people. And then, they, and they come back to you. But if you right there all the time, they don't think they're just seeing you. Try to give me these thoughts and give me these ideas and oh, I can think for myself, okay? All right, all right. <laughs> you feel me? That's and, not going to be ignorant. Right. <laughs> so you got to pull back to let them experience and sense themselves in the reality they were creating. you got to let them make their own decision. So that's why I said just keep the DVD ministry. Don't get stuck with no people too long. When people feel like they are disagreeable, let them be, let them have their space, and go hit 99 billion other people. Keep hitting 99 billion other people. And they all come around. As you plant seeds, they will grow up and do harvest. As long as you stay on point and you're able to come and harvest them when the seeds do grow up. If you give up, it's not going to be nothing but just some plants that's just going to grow. Ain't going to be nobody there to harvest. So you got to just keep Plant the seeds and make sure you're there for the harvest. Because with all this information, people gonna start waking up. I said I go to High Park now. They opening up a vegan restaurant. Right. And I said, you know, all the years I've been to High Park, there's more vegans in High Park than any other neighborhood I've been in. <laughs> but they never had really had like a vegan restaurant. They just had the Indian vegetarian to mm -hmm. sell chicken. But with <laughs> all the health DVDs we put out, the overwhelming demand manifested itself for a vegan restaurant. So they opened up one. And now I see a whole other consciousness in Hyde Park. I see people walking down the street talking about the power of their mind and meditation and stuff like that, and stuff that's on the DVDs. I walk up on conversations all the time and hear people talking about the DVDs. And I'm like, dang, 
I ain't gotta talk about this no more. <laughs> they talking about it on their own because we got we've got it started. So now it's a different place. So five years from now, with these ideas being projected into certain areas and neighborhoods, they won't be the same. We are, have already contributed to a new future. It's gonna be it's gonna be a new future. Because information now, it's not information on the TV, on no cable channel. You can't mm -hmm. order it, it's not on pay-per-view. Some of this information just have not been getting to the consciousness of people. The revolution ain't gonna be televised. Come on. And now that we're doing it, we're going to be start seeing new societies, new attitude, new neighborhoods, you know, new politics. Because we, we, because we know. So don't think that what we're doing is by no means small. I see the massive effect. She can sit back. I see it. So the work. But I thank all the people for whatever level. Because I myself could be doing more. I'm not as arrogant to say that I myself am doing all and don't need to cut some certain ties to even become more revolutionary, more nationalistic. So since I know that myself, I cannot do and thank everybody. No matter how serious or how serious I judge or think them to be, don't get me wrong. I thank everybody for whatever contribution they had made to, you know, whether it was some support, some thought, you know, a conversation on the phone when I was about to lose my damn mind. I'm just joking. <laughs> but whatever energy, time that people have put into what we're doing, it is much contributed. You know, you don't have to be, you know, on the front line to be a hero all the time. Hmm. You know, a lot of times the small stuff do count. And that small stuff adds up. So whatever people have done, whatever part, no matter where they stepped out or stepped in, it's appreciated. And I would not be standing here today with the message, with the amount of work that's ahead of us to do, if it was not for those people. So I'm not going to throw them all in one. I would thank them each person if I could remember all of them. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to say that, that, that all that was <laughs> all that was valuable. Every, just because someone doesn't accept the totality of what is we talking about doesn't make them not valuable. Because the totality is made of everybody. It ain't made of one person with all these thoughts is made of all the people in whatever small level that they can contribute to what we're doing. So we thank all of them. We just don't lose focus because they have not chose to come all the way into the promised land. Say, you know, Moses led the people to the promised land, but he wasn't even allowed in there. So everybody who's helping the promised land be established and realized may not be in there. Do you see what I'm thinking? It's a possibility. But if Moses hadn't have did what he did, they would not have made it to the promised land. So a lot of people are Moseses. They ain't coming. But they willing to come up on some line and help and say, well, I'm not going to go that far. I still love Whitey a little bit, but I see a little bit of what you're saying. So I help out like this. Or I feel you on that level. We do need that, but I don't have the courage right now to step out and do nothing like that. So I'll help you like this. That's helping make the promised land be established. The key is as long as we ourselves stay focused on the work that we're doing. Because some of those people can try to pull you out the promised land if you let them. You know, some people will <laughs> be helping you and then they'll be like, man, you know, they hire me. You feel me? <laughs> they hire me right down the uh, street. I'll get you in. Like, get you not in the I said, we hate the Europeans. <laughs> you didn't, you, that, didn't, that wasn't said clear. What part of I hate the European and the system didn't you hear? Okay, I, I, I know what you're saying. But that's the point that I make. If you're not careful, they'll pull you back into slavery and make it sound good. Well, if you just get a little job with the European, it wouldn't mean nothing. If you put a few hours in, you know, make a little few dollars. You know, you could charge a little something for the DVD. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's part of my mother's pitch on Tuesday. <laughs> you. you could charge something for the DVDs. $15, $20, that ain't too much to ask for. I mean, if people really like what you're talking about, they're willing to pay something. See the technology? People, if they ain't going to pay for it, they might not be, they might, that means they're really not interested in it. You see the technology? Now, what if somebody ain't got $20? Does that mean they're not interested in it? Or does it mean they don't have the money? But you see the technology? It sounds good. Yeah, you're right. Shit. Yeah, they might not be interested if they don't give me the money for the deal. That's probably true. So that means I should only go to rich neighborhoods where people got money. Or go where people are going to have money to put this information out. So I'll never give it to the neighborhoods or the people where they really need it. You see how the devil start getting it out? 
So that's when you got to cut the line. Cut the line. Because people are now still, they want to pull you back into Luciferianism. And you trying to loose the fear, for real. You trying to let it go. <laughs> you feel me? Sure. And they trying to bring you back into it. Well, you know, get, get you at least a little class or something, you know. Maybe you can get a class teaching black history. Because being black is history. You got to be European today, no matter what your complexion is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can be a black history instructor. You don't have to go out there and be a proactive person working in the community. You can just teach about our history. You see the technology. Well, ain't it a school or a college or something you can go to? Put the collar around your neck. Ain't it a way you can do that? Nah, it's no way. So that's when we become uncompromising. A little fish in your diet won't hurt nothing. I mean, a fish is a vegetable. <laughs> you ain't heard it before? Uh, I know y'all have heard it before. <laughs> I've heard people say fish ain't meat. That ain't meat. It got eyeballs and a spleen and a liver, but it's not meat. Mm -hmm. You can eat fish. How is a fish not meat? Really? Exactly. I'm a vegetarian. I said, oh, but I, I, I'm a vegetarian. I'm the one, the type of vegetarian that eats fish. I said the word vegetarian encompasses the word vegetable. <laughs> How do you be a fish and be a vegetarian? <laughs> but they'll throw, they'll slide it on you. Right. And fish is good for you. You need a little fish oil in you and this, that, and the other, and before you know it, you start back eating fish and work your way back up the chicken. Hmm. Then you be like, well, turkey ain't too far from chicken. <laughs> well, a little red meat won't hurt. Before you know it, you're back at beef, and then you're a tour. So my point is, you can't let the devil, when you see the devil rear his head on that level, you got to check him. When somebody try to rap him out smoking weed, and you're at your highest level, <coughs> you're motivated, and you are just positive, and you're like, oh, smoke some weed, he won't hurt you. You smoke that weed, you be depressed than you ever been in your life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You be depressed for a whole month. And you be motivated. Like, well, I can't say weed won't hurt it. You be at the house like, this about it. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yes, the devil got you again. So that's why you got uh, to a lot of things, and not just drug, you got to say no to it. Then you have to be firm. Because you will literally get pulled in. Literally. And the more you get pulled in, corruption only goes downhill. You get pulled in more. That's when you say, well, I'm just going to smoke weed. And then you attract somebody into your cipher and they smoking weed with crack. Hmm. But you would never have generated them if you had not been smoking weed. Do you understand what I'm making? You would never have generated somebody talking about, well, since you're smoking weed, ecstasy is good too long. The high you got with weed, you get a little of that ecstasy, you'll be straight. You know what I'm talking about. But you would never have got to that because corruption start going downhill. So my point is you got to cut it off. And when you see it getting other than nation building and, and revolution, you got to cut that off. Did you know that they advertise um, Lil Jump, not Lil Jump. Um, that's funny, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne and uh, Baby, they advertise doing uh, crack and, 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 and dope and stuff. Like, it ain't nothing wrong with it in the South. Man, I was like, are you serious? He, this is, these are people who are in front of our children more and more mm -hmm. every day. If you allow your children to watch that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. but but crack. They advertising it. They saying, man, it ain't nothing. It ain't. No, it's just another part of life. And you said three six mafia. Yeah. And and the supposed guy, the meth man, the great man. Oh, been doing that. You know what I'm saying? They've been doing that. That's unbelievable. So when you said it trickles down. It goes down here. And then they in front of our, and they in front of the TVs every single day. People babysit. You hear me? They making our children think it's okay to do drugs. That's why you don't have, I don't have no problem disconnecting. Yeah, that's, that's where you have to start. <laughs> you gonna watch something, it's okay to watch Cartoon Network, but even that, you have to cut off yeah, some time. Without a doubt. And you can't keep arguing with someone to what they're trying to rationalize, you know is insane. Mm -hmm. You have to cut it off. Like, okay, well, you can still eat pork and <laughs> be healthy, there's no health to you. 
but they'll rationalize it. I don't have my mind. I project positive thoughts and I pray when I'm uh, poor. You bless the food. You bless the food and be fat. God said, bless everything you eat over here. Nobody blessed fat. food more than my grandma. <laughs> and she died of every disease known to man. From man. diabetes to liver cancer, colon cancer. She had them all at once. When they radiated another one, it came up in another place. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, people are dying from different things. They think they're looking for healing and their whole body is dying at once from what they did. And by the time they get old, like uh, Farrakhan, he had prostate cancer, now he got colon cancer. So, I mean, come on, it's a losing battle when you really make, don't choose to do the right thing. So, that's why you gotta, you gotta cut it off. And those relationships with people who are rational and insanity must go. Let them go. If you go rationalize eating pork and doing that, let it go. Anybody who thinks that we're going to build a community with some of these religious concepts, they want to be let go too. Hmm. You know, you're around some, uh, I noticed an example of being around some Muslims. <coughs> you see the point I'm making, I, I see where that gets corrupt. <coughs> they talk about, well, you know, uh, brother, I, I saw you talking to my wife. I said, do she speak English? <laughs> They get corrupted. Now we can't come together as a community because everybody is afraid of their je- a wife. You're going to talk to my wife, or you're going to talk to my husband, and it gets corrupted. Ain't no nation, community going to happen like that because those concepts create isolation because you're afraid of other people. you got to watch other human beings like possessions. How the hell do you want really connect? That means you don't respect the humanity of everybody. You just respect the human beings you know. Do you see what I'm making? There ain't no, ain't no community going to come out of that. How are we going to come together as a community and separate as a community over certain concepts? That has change. Same thing with our children. Everybody wants to educate everybody's children. Ain't no your children, my children, they're all of our children. If anything happened to us, our children is your children. My wife is your wife. Our husband is your husband. You feel about that? Yes. Ain't no somebody left out. Somebody, well, you know, he did. That was his wife. No, no such thing.